Hello, in this lecture we will take a look at an assignment that will be very similar to the homework. The format will remain the same, the numbers will change. Remember, there's two things that we want to get from these lectures and these problems, and that will be one, understanding the, the accounting concepts, and two, understanding Excel. This is where we learn Excel, this is where we learn 90% of what we do in Excel, meaning formatting worksheets, entering data, and using that data. You will take an Excel class, but the Excel class is where you really want to focus on the tips and tricks to make your worksheet stand out more presentable, do things like formatting in terms of color and this types of things. So those are the two things we are getting from these assignments. Keep both of those in mind as we are uh, moving through these assignments. So take a look at the worksheet. We're going to start off with our accounting equation once again. We have assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. We are now working on memorizing what asset accounts are. Cash is an asset account. Receivables is an asset account. Supplies is an asset account. Liabilities has accounts payable at this time. Owner's equity has capital, revenue, wages, utilities. Then we have the equation being balanced for you. We will not be working these sales, but they will calculate automatically. The assets will equal the liabilities and owner's equity. If they do, it will be green here. If they don't, it will be red or some other color, which indicates that we are out of balance. We also have the net income, which also will calculate automatically for you, which is the revenue less the expenses. We will only be putting information into the cells here. So we're going to put our transactions in. This is going to be in accordance with the receivable cycle. So we're going to be focusing heavily on accounts receivable. And every transaction will remember have at least two accounts, the accounts being up here. And every account, every transaction, these being the transactions, will affect the accounting equation in such a way that it will remain in balance. Keeping those in mind, let's take a look at the first transaction. Perform work on account for 10,000. So if something says that we perform work on account, the question might be, is cash affected? And the answer would be no in this case because we performed it on account. We're gonna have to learn the terminology of a book or any kind of word problem when we do things in a word problem format. Obviously in real life, we would know that we did work and we hadn't yet been paid. When we do any type of word problem, we're going to have to interpret the words and, and put ourselves in that scenario. If it says on account, that means, in this case, accounts receivable. So we did work. We got something. We didn't yet get cash. We got an IOU. We got an accounts receivable. We expect to be paid in the future. There is value in that because we did work and are owed money. Therefore, we're going to record an asset just like cash, but it's not cash yet. It's our second favorite asset because we expect it to be converted to cash within 30 days. Once again, I'm on the cell, not in the cell, in cell E3. And I'm going to type in here 10,000 with no comma. And then I'm in the cell. We can see it here. We can see it in the formula bar. I'm going to hit enter. Now it has posted and it has formatted with a comma. What's the other account of, is affected if we did work? Why are they going to pay us? Because we earned revenue in this case. That's going to be over here under the owner's equity. It's actually an income statement account. Revenue is going up. If this side of the equal sign went up by 10,000, then this side of the equal sign must be going up by 10,000. So it must be an, a positive 10,000 in cell M3. I'm in the cell instead of on the cell. I'm going to hit enter. And what will happen over here is it will turn green, meaning that the total assets now equal the total liabilities. Also, net income is affected because revenue went up <coughs> over here. And net income is calculated as revenue minus expenses. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the zeros in the other cells, representing the fact that n nothing happened to them. So I'm going to put my cursor in cell C3. C3, it's right there. And we're going to put a zero. And then I'm going to select the tab to tab through. Remember, practicing tab is good to do. Get a nice rhythm on it. Tab, 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 tab. Supplies a zero. Tab, tab. Accounts payable, zero. Tab, tab. Capital, zero. Tab, 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 tab. Wages, expense, zero, tab, tab, and utilities is zero, and enter. And that brings us back to the, where we started the tabs over here in column C. So now we have this is our first account, and we're going to show the balance now. Now, of course, the balance only consists of the first accounts here because we're starting at zero. Therefore, all we need to do is bring these numbers down. Instead of just typing them in again, though, we want to get in the best practice of using formulas as much as possible. That's the point of Excel. Anytime we can use a formula, we generally want to use a formula for the most part. The formula will start with an equal sign, and then I'm going to point to the zero, and then select tab, tab. And then I'm over here in E4, I'm going to say equals, I'm going to point to E3, 
We can see it in the formula bar. We can see it here as well. We're going to hit tab. The 10,000 pops up like we think it should. Tab, once again, we're in supplies. Equals, we're going to point to cell G4, uh, G3, I'm sorry, and then select the tab, tab. In uh, accounts payable, we're going to point to cell I3, tab, tab. In capital, we're going to say equals, point to cell K3, tab, tab. We're going to say equals, we're going to point to cell M3, tab, tab. And we're going to say equals, point to cell O0, tab, tab, and then equals and point to cell Q3. So remember, you want to you want to tab through there. You want to get used to the tab. If you have a 10 key, I would strongly recommend using a 10 key, buying an external 10 key if you have a laptop that doesn't have one. It could help you a lot to learn that as you go. Then we are now on the balance account here, and we can see that we are in balance by the green over here. All we care about now is this balance, what happens in the transaction B and then the new balance. So we're going to take a look at transaction B, which says receive cash on account for work performed in the past. So is cash affected? Yes, in this case. Again, we're not focusing on cash, but I'd still ask that question every time. Is cash affected? Because it will be affected many more times than any other account that we will look at. And it will become more apparent what cash will be doing. So I'm going to go into cash and say, yeah, we received cash. That's 10,000 and then enter it formats for us. What's the other accounts that affected? Why did people pay us cash? You might be thinking because we earned revenue and that is true, but we earned revenue in the past and now we're receiving cash on account for the work that was done in the past. Therefore, we, we can't recognize revenue because of course we've recognized it already in that 10,000. What's happening now is people owed us money and now they have paid us. So this 10,000 that was owed now needs to go down. So the other asset account here needs to be a negative 10,000. That 10,000 needs to go down. I'm going to represent the negative with a minus sign, then 10,000, no comma, no brackets. Then I'm going to select enter and it will put the comma and the brackets in there. Once again, because of the formatting in the home tab number group, it's in the number formatting. So we can see that one asset went up, one asset went down. No effect on the accounting equation, but Something did happen, meaning we got a better asset. We got cash, which we would rather have than an IOU. I'm going to go ahead and put the zeros in the rest of the cells. So I'm going to sell G5, and we're going to say zero, tab, tab, 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 zero, and enter. So we got the zeros in there. Now we have the beginning balance. We have the activity for B, and now we're going to have the balance down here. So obviously we're going to add up the zero and the 10. We're going to add up the 10 and the negative 10 and so on and so forth but we're going to do that with formulas so we're going to be in cell c6 we're going to select equals we're going to point to c4 plus c5 and tab tab we are now in e6 we're going to say that equals we're going to point to c uh, e4 which had that 10,000 in it i'm going to say plus that e5 and once again you might be saying well isn't that a subtraction problem it is but we can see that that's a negative number. So when we're saying take what's in cell E4, add it to the negative number, we have a plus and a minus next to each other. That's why it's a neg that's why it's a negative and brings it down to zero. Once again, I'm going to delete that. If you went the wrong way, if we said this uh, minus this, we know that it should go down to zero because the receivable is going down. No one owes us any money. And if we did that and it went up to 20, that's we can see that it didn't do what we wanted to do so when we go through excel we can't be complete we need to be mindful of which way it's going to go so that we can see that it went the wrong way even though we don't need to be totally mindful of doing the calculation completely we want to look for things that check our figures so i'm going to delete that i'm going to say this equals this plus this and then it goes to zero tab tab and i'm going to go all the way through this equals this plus this tab tab this equals uh, I4 plus I5, tab, tab, and column K equals K4 plus K5, tab, tab, column M equals M4 plus M5, tab, tab, and column O equals O4 plus O5, tab, tab, and column Q equals Q4 plus Q5, and enter. So now we can see that once again the assets here add up to 10, add up to 10 equal the liabilities and owner's equity, add up to 10, add up to 10.
Now, the next thing that happens in column C, once again, all we care about is this column, column before the C, and then what happens in transaction C, and then the new balance after transaction C. So we see here in transaction C that work is performed on account uh, and invoiced the client. So we did work and we invoiced the client. Therefore, that means we did work is cash affected. And we're going to say no, because we did work once again on account. And then we invoiced the client. Therefore, we did the work. We sent out the invoice, which is the bill to the client. But we have not yet received any funds from the client. Therefore, uh, we're going to have to do our second favorite asset, not cash, but accounts receivable. They owe us money. So it's still an asset. It's like cash because it's something that we are saying that we received. We have got, we're going to, we're going to get money in the future. So it's worth something. We could actually sell it to someone else if we, if we earned it and we wanted to sell the receivable. So we earned in this case, 